A to Z Mysteries Book Number 20 The Talking T-Rex by Ron Roy Chapter 9 All three of you fellows wear these band-aids? Officer Fallon asked Judd. Judd nodded. Working on Tyrone, we weren't always nicking our fingers, he said. So I bought a box of band-aids, and we all keep a few in our pocket. Officer Fallon glanced at the duffel bag. Who handled that bag last? I'm the only one who ever put the money in the bag, Judd said. I must have been wearing a band-aid, and it slipped off my finger when I stuck the bag in the compartment. Or the band-aid could have fallen off the thief's finger when he stole the bag, Officer Fallon said. Whoever it was, he gave Judd a close look. Judd thought for a moment before he spoke. I know it looks like one of us stole the money, he said. But I sure didn't take it, and I can't believe Dean or Scoop would either. Could the robber be someone else? Dink asked. But who? Officer Fallon said. Judd, you told me only you and Dean have keys to your dinosaur. That's right, Judd said. But Dean is my best friend. Officer Fallon slipped the baggie and his pen into a pocket. Between Scoop Riker and Dean Whitefeather, who had more opportunity to get at that duffel bag? He asked Judd. Judd looked at his feet. Dean, I guess, he mumbled. He slept next to Tyrone last night. Officer Fallon put his hand on Judd's shoulder. I want you to wait in my office while I get Dean, he said. Do you think he's still at the fireworks? I guess, Judd said. Meanwhile, I'll put this money in our safe, Officer Fallon went on. I'll see you at the station in a few minutes. Looking embarrassed, Judd turned and headed toward Main Street. In a few seconds, he had disappeared in the darkness. Officer Fallon looked at Dink, Josh, and Ruth Rose. Your parents might be missing you by now, he said. I'll take you back, okay? Dink, Josh, and Ruth Rose followed Officer Fallon to his cruiser and climbed into the back seat. Officer Fallon drove them to Main Street. Colorful fireworks were still lighting the skies over the town swimming pool. Officer Fallon parked between the tennis courts and the baseball field. The kids watched him walk toward the baseball field fence. Then they went to find their parents. There you are, Dink's mother said. We thought you'd been abducted by aliens. Looking at his watch, Dink realized they'd been gone nearly half an hour. The kids sat where they could watch Officer Fallon. He walked over to Dean, and the two men stood talking for a minute. The car pulled onto Main Street and disappeared. I can't believe Judd's friend robbed him, Ruth Rosa said. Josh lay back on the grass. I wonder what will happen to Tyrone now, he said. I guess Judd and Scoop will hire someone to take Dean's place, Dink said. Where is Scoop? Ruth Rose asked. Wasn't he by the fence with Dean? Dink asked. No, Josh said. Only Dean was there. Maybe Scoop went back to the hotel. He said he didn't get much sleep last night because of the storm. Dink remembered the storm raging outside his window last night. He thought about Dean waking up in the rain and dashing for the chuck. In his mind, he saw those muddy footprints on the shed floor. And that morning, Scoop's wet sneakers hanging from his car antenna. Guys, I think everyone's wrong about Dean, Dink said suddenly. I think Scoop stole the money and I think he hid it in the garden shed. But he didn't have a key. Josh said, I think Scoop knew that Dean wouldn't sleep outside once it started to rain. Dean moved into the chuck cab to stay dry and that's when Scoop got inside a Tyrone. How? Scoop didn't have a key, Josh said again. Somehow Scoop must have taken Judd's key while Judd was asleep, Dink said. Scoop stole the duffel bag, hid it in the shed, then ran back to the hotel. He must have planned to return to the shed later to get the money. Suddenly, Ruth Rose gasped. Maybe that's where Scoop is now, she said. He could sneak away like we did. Come on, Dink said. 
The kid zipped past the mystic greenhouse, cut behind the book nook, and raced toward the rose garden. Out of breath, they crouched behind some rose bushes ten yards from the shed. A light flickered through the open door. Someone's inside, Josh hissed. The three kids crept close enough to see inside the shed. They saw a dark-haired figure kneeling in front of the stack of burlap bags. When the man stood up, they knew it was a scoop raker. What should we do? Ruth Rose whispered. The screwdriver is there, Josh said. I'm gonna lock him in. No, Dink said. Let's go get Officer Fallon. Josh shook his head. Not enough time. When Scoop doesn't find the money, he'll take off. He started to crawl through the rose bushes toward the shed. Ouch! he yelled. What happened? whispered Ruth Rose. Darn thorns! Josh whispered back. Suddenly, Scoop burst out of the shed. He turned his flashlight beam on Josh. Before anyone else could react, Scoop had grabbed Josh by the arm. Okay, kid, what did you do with the money? he demanded. You leave him alone, Ruth Rose cried as she and Dink sprinted to Josh's side. Yes, leave him alone, a deeper voice said. Officer Fallon and Dean stepped out from behind the shed. Chapter 10 An hour later, the kids were lying on their sleeping bags in Dink's backyard. They were gazing up at the stars. There's the Big Dipper, Josh said, sitting up. I think I see Mars, Dink said. There's a shooting star. Make a wish, Ruth Rose said. I wish I could be the first woman president. I wish Ruth Rose could become president and put me in charge of desserts, Josh said. Dink and Ruth Rose sat up and laughed. I wish Judd and Dean would leave Tyrone and Green Lawn, Dink said. Yeah, Josh said. That would be so excellent. We could make him walk all over town. People would pay us to give them rides in Tyrone, Ruth Rose added. We could send the money to Judd and Dean for their museum. The three kids sighed and settled back on their sleeping bags. I still can't figure out how Scoop got Judd's key, Ruth Rose said. Oh, that was easy, Josh said. I figured it out a long time ago. Dink popped up and glared at his friend. And are you planning to tell us? Josh let out a dramatic sigh. Scoop heard Dean say it was going to rain last night. He knew Dean would probably move inside somewhere to stay dry. I think that's when Scoop decided to steal the money. He waited till Judd was sound asleep, then took his key. But how did Scoop get into Judd's room? Dink asked. He didn't have to, Josh said. They slept in the same room. Joshua, how do you know that? Ruth Rose asked. Josh grinned. Remember when Mr. Linkletter said hi to us at the fireworks? I heard him ask Judd and Scoop how their room was. Room, not rooms. It's a good thing Officer Fallon showed up at the shed, Dink said. I wonder how he knew Scoop would go there. Dean might have convinced him, Josh said. Dean must have figured out the only way the crook could have gotten a key was by taking it from Judd during the night. And Dean knew Judd and Scoop shared a room. Well, I hate to admit it, Dink said, but you're pretty smart. I know, Josh said, but thanks anyway. You're welcome, Dink said. Maybe I'll put you in charge of the FBI when I'm president, Ruth Rose said. Josh yawned. No, I'd rather be in charge of food. The three kids smiled in the dark. Then, as the stars twinkled above them, they slowly went to sleep.